Hello everyone and welcome back to Shanti Finance. Today is a day for acrylics tutorial and I am going to demonstrate these flying fishes. It's a surreal painting done in acrylic and I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed painted it. But let me share a little bit of story behind the painting first. As a part of my Inktober series, I did quite a bit of concept sketches. Some of it uh, worked and some of it did not. And I, I intend to convert a lot of these concept sketches into paintings. Out of which one that really pleased my heart was this painting of flying fishes around bamboo trees. Well, that is not really following the laws of physics, but it's a world of art and surreal art you can do anything your heart pleases so that's where the inspiration of this painting came from by the way let me remind you if you are not subscribed on this channel already i have tutorials posted every wednesday and friday in the evening esd hours so consider subscribing and do not forget to hit the like comment and subscribe buttons thank you Whenever I start a painting, I generally start with painting the background first and then slowly move to the foreground. Meaning, I paint the objects of the surface that is farthest away from my view and then slowly move forward to the objects that are closer to my view. So in this case, I started working on the sky and the sea of clouds in the sky first. And as you can see at this point, I am working with acrylic paints and being very messy and letting my brush strokes show. I am using the mop brush here and there every now and then to get rid of some of the brush strokes. But I'm not really worrying too much about uh, leaving some of the brush strokes behind. The reason being is that I know to get the right amount of details in the clouds, I will have to put in a multiple layers of paint and uh, glazes on, for the clouds. As I put on multiple layers, the, some of the initial layers will get covered. And so most of the time, the brush strokes will get covered and I do not have to worry about them at the very end of the painting. In this painting, although I had a little bit of drawback because initially my idea was to start this painting and block the background with acrylics and then block the uh, subject matter which are the playing fishes in front with acrylic as well and then move over to oils. Now when you work with oils, it having the nature of uh, drying very slowly it helps you to blend very smoothly and take your time and so you can paint the background and the subject matter simultaneously you do not have to work very fast so this is why I blocked in the fishes much ahead of time usually when I work with acrylics I would finish the background completely and then start working on my foreground or on my subject that is on top of the background but since I had initially wanted to paint the subject or rather finish the whole painting with oil paints I started the subject much early on and after I put on the subject on top of the background and let it dry for a few days I realized I really don't need to get oils on it I can finish the whole painting with acrylics yes it would be a little bit difficult in this case because I have to work around the subject and try not to get too much paint on the subject and get the right amount of blending in that process it will be hard but it will still be doable and I do not need to mix oil with acrylic paints not that it is not doable but I don't need to do that to get the desired effect so I changed my mind and I decided to finish the whole painting with acrylics and not go to oil paints. Now coming back to the painting, you can see that when I started with the fishes, I initially just blocked them with a solid color. One of the fishes a little bit more orangish, one of the fishes a little bit more reddish 
and the last fish that is hidden mostly in the cloud at the bottom I did it a combination of orange and lilac and this is the point where I decided that okay I am going to go all acrylics and not go for oil paint at all so I started off with a very back layer of the sky and darkened it quite a bit you could disagree with me with the darkness of the sky at the very back um, it might look a little overwhelming too much color for you but I liked it this way so I did painted it this way now at this point I'm pretty sure you're thinking what is where is she going it is looking ugly hideous as as ugly as possible probably but I have a plan I know I am going to do multiple multiple layers of paint and I'm still still now working wet on wet with acrylic paints so no matter how dark my back back layer or the first layer is because I'm working wet on wet a lot of the top layers are getting mixed with the back layers and getting the right amount of dark and light and contrast and that is why I'm doing it so I do have a plan so just stay around with me show a little bit of perseverance and you will see where I'm going with it yes I know it still looks like absolutely crazy at this point but give it a few more minutes and you will see where I'm going with it the reason it looks so crazy is because I am adjusting the shape of the clouds constantly to look more realistic and I am adjusting the colors so that you the clouds look more fluffier and not flat a lot of times I've seen that when painting with uh, painting clouds a lot of artists stop really early they think that if they put on more layers they are going to overwork a paint but in this particular painting you will see how many layers of paint I have put in the clouds and you will agree with me that there is nothing called overworking a painting because that is how you get to the point where you think that this is what I want it still looks pretty ugly I understand because there is still too much contrast in the clouds but just have a little bit more faith give a little bit more time and you will see how slowly I'm building up my clouds and most of the very very dark areas will get covered by lighter areas and eventually with very bright highlights in some areas but for the very bright highlights I use it very sparingly in all my paintings because that is where your attention gets drawn so you want to use it very sparingly so that you want to direct the viewers eyes in those areas and uh, you want them not to you do not want their viewers eyes to direct in all of the area so I'm still adjusting a little bit of lights and darks in the bottom layers now I'm coming a little bit downwards towards the layer where I kind of wanted it to look like a sea and a sea of clouds for that matter and again you can see that I started with the initial pretty dark layers and then I'm putting lighter layers on top most of the times I'm working wet on wet but sometimes I'm working wet on dry areas as well it's just a matter of combination of both of them and whatever works whenever it works so not that everything is 100% planned out but I have a plan and then I keep changing when a plan change keep changing my mind when certain plan doesn't work and you know work according to um, the requirements of the painting now finally I get back to the fishes once again starting on this one I am putting in my very dark shadows at first and then you will see that in multiple layers I have put in the lighter colors you will see that for the lighter colors I am adding the white layers first or rather I'm painting the lighter areas with white first 
and then I'm glazing colors on top of it. The reason being, in this particular fish, the lighter colors are yellow and red, and both of them are pretty transparent colors, or rather translucent colors. So if I put them directly on top of the darker layers, it probably not show at all. The reds and yellows will not show, and it will actually make the dark uh, background look very muddy that's all it will do so you have to first paint white areas and then glaze those white areas with color to get the level of yellow and red that you're looking for so that's the trick in painting um, red and yellow uh, on top of darker layers and let making them show up prominently and for the scales of the fish that you see that I am just adding hints of darker layers and on top of them I'm adding a hint of highlight with white. And why I'm doing hints is because this area is not really very big. So if I try to paint each scale very prominently, I will probably add too much detail which will not eventually look good. So just a hint is good enough. Now, if it were a much larger fish, then I would have probably taken the time to paint each and every scale minutely and with details. But depending on the size, you have to adjust the amount of details you put in. And with that, we come to the end of the painting. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section. Thank you for watching.